Chapter Twenty of Plunkett of Tammany Hall: A Series of Very Plain Talks on Very Practical Politics. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mike Vendetti. Plunkett of Tammany Hall: A Series of Very Plain Talks on Very Practical Politics by George Washington Plunkett. Chapter Twenty: Bosses Preserve the Nation. When I retired from the Senate, I thought I would take a good long rest, such a rest as a man need who has held office for about forty years and has held four different offices in one year, and drawn salaries from three of them at the same time. Drawn so many salaries is rather fatiguing. You know, and, as I said, I started out for a rest, but when I seen how things were going in New York State and how a great big black shadow hung over us, I said to myself, No rest for you, George. Your work ain't done. Your country still needs you, and you mustn't lay down yet. What was the great big black shadow? It was the primary election law, amended so as to knock out what are called the party bosses by letting in everybody at the primaries and giving control over them to state officials. Oh, yes, that is a good way to do up the so-called bosses. But have you ever thought what would become of the country if the bosses were put out of business and their places were taken by a lot of cart-tailed orators? and college graduates it would mean chaos it would be just like taking a lot of dry goods clerks and setting them to run express trains on the new york central railroad it makes my heart bleed to think of it ignorant people are always talking against party bosses but just wait till the bosses are gone then and not until then will they get the right sort of epitaphs as patrick henry or robert emmett said Look at the bosses of Tammany Hall in the last twenty years. What magnificent men! To them New York City owes pretty much all it is today. John Kelly, Richard Crocker, and Charles F. Murphy? What names in American history compares with them, except Washington and Lincoln? They built up the grand Tammany organization, and the organization built up New York. Suppose the city had depended for the last twenty years on irresponsible concerns like the Citizens' Union. Where would it be now? You can make a pretty good guess if you recall the strong and low administrations when there was no boss, and the heads of departments were at odds all the time with each other, and the mayor was at odds with a lot of them. They spent so much time in arguing and making grandstand play that the interests of the city were forgotten. Another administration of that kind would put New York back a quarter of a century. Then see how beautiful a Tammany city government runs with a so-called boss directing the whole shooting match the machinery moves so noiselessly that you wouldn't think there was any if there's any differences of opinion the tammany leader settles them quietly and his orders go every time how nice it is for the people to feel that they can get up in the morning without him afraid of seeing the papers that the commissioner of water supply has sandbagged the dock commissioner and that the mayor and heads of the departments have been taken to the police court as witnesses that's no joke i remember that under strong some commissioners came very near sandbagging one another of course the newspapers like the reform administration why because these administrations with their daily rows furnish as racy news as prize fights or divorce cases tammany don't care to get in the papers he goes right along attending to business quietly and only wants to be let alone that's one reason why the papers are against us. Some papers complain that the bosses get rich while devoting their lives to the interest of the city. What of it? If opportunities for turning an honest dollar comes their way, why shouldn't they take advantage of them? Just as I have done. As I said in another talk, there is honest graft and dishonest graft. The bosses go in for the former. There is so much of it in this big town that they would be fools to go for dishonest graft. Now the primary election law threatens to do away with the boss and make the city government a menagerie. That's why I can't take the rest I counted on. I'm going to propose a bill the next session of the legislature, repealing this dangerous law and leaving the primaries entirely to the organizations themselves, as they used to be. Then we'll return the good old times, when our district leaders could have nice comfortable primary elections had some place selected by themselves, and let in only the men they approved of as good Democrats. 
who is a better judge of the democracy of a man who offers his vote than the leader of the district who is better equipped to keep out undesirable voters the men who put through the primary law are the same crowd that stand for the civil service blight and they have the same objects in view the destruction of governments by party the downfall of the constitution and hell generally end of chapter twenty